What's up all my musicians and should I say potential filmmakers out there because in this video I'm going to show you how I record my music production tutorials. This has been something I've been asked about a lot especially because I have three YouTube channels this is just one of them and I've been doing YouTube for maybe about six or seven years now so not only have I studied a lot about music production and making music and being an electronic artist but I've also studied a ton about video production and video editing so for this video I'm going to start way in the beginning of basically the equipment that I use to film videos. I'm gonna show you basically the recording process. And then lastly, I'll show you the editing process. So basically how I make all my music production tutorials from start all the way to finish. So starting with the equipment, I have a tripod. Here's a picture of it just cause obviously I'm using the tripod to film this right now. As you can see, first off, it's just a normal tripod. I got this online for like 20 bucks. All the equipment and stuff I'm gonna mention in this video, I would link this below in the description. So this is the main tripod I use, nothing too crazy. Now at the top, as you can see, I actually have a smartphone attachment. So I actually film all my videos with my iPhone XR. It films in 4K, but I actually bounce out all my videos in 720p, but I'll get to that a little bit later. But as you can see, it's super simple. You know, a lot of times people think that you need crazy equipment and cameras to start on YouTube. Honestly, just use your phone. Most phones can at least film in 1080p and it's super easy to do. So now getting to my setup here, I actually have a Blue Yeti. This is my main microphone. I have a pop filter. This is then wired into my computer. Obviously I have a MacBook Pro and then I have the Anchor kind of USB splitter. So this kind of helps me plug a lot of things in at the same time. In addition, you may notice I have basically a laptop cooler. This is the Habit laptop cooler. This is super useful. As you can see, there's kind of a, uh, a blue light to it when it turns on. It's kind of that Tron blue color. And the main reason why is because when I'm filming these videos, and as you can imagine, also playing music, using music production plugins, it takes up a lot of CPU. And surprisingly, out of anything, when it comes to filming videos, this has actually been the best of handling CPU usage. You know, it's been super, super helpful. So that's my main setup, right? I have, again, tripod, smartphone attachment. My iPhone XR is recording this right now as we speak. And then my Blue Yeti for basically all my audio. And then just have like normal headphones here. Now jumping into my computer, I'm gonna show you basically the three main programs I use. The first one is OBS. Now the cool thing I will say about these programs, these are all free. So OBS is basically the main program I use to screen capture my computer screen. So as you can see, you can see what's going on here. I have stuff on my desktop, you know, so on and so forth. Next, I have a program called Line In. Now what Line In does is basically a virtual audio splitter. So it can send audio signals to two different places at the exact same time. The last thing I have is Soundflower. So essentially what I do, first off, any sound that I'm playing on my computer is routed through Soundflower. Now Soundflower is a completely free program. It's basically like a virtual channel. So basically, as you can see, all the audio that I'm outputting from my computer is into Soundflower 2CH. In addition, when I film my Ableton tutorials, you know, I'm gonna go to live and then preferences, and you make sure you wanna do this, make sure you double check, I'm gonna send it to Soundflower. So that's the first thing I do. I make sure that any audio that's playing on my computer, whether it's of a track or a song, whether it's on my desktop or whether it's on a program like this, I'm gonna make sure it's outporting to Soundflower 2CH. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Line In, and as you can see here, I basically have the input from the Soundflower or from the Soundflower virtual channel, and that's being sent to the Blue Yeti microphone. Essentially what's happening is I'm saying, hey, because I'm outputting this audio to 2CH or to Soundflower, I can't hear it because I'm sending it to Soundflower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split the signal. So I'm gonna send it to two different places. The audio that I'm getting from my music is being sent to Soundflower, so that way I can record it. And then the other audio, as you can see, is being sent to the Blue Yeti microphone. I have my headphones attached into here, as you can see. I'm in a sense using my Blue Yeti kind of like a makeshift interface. So that's the way you basically route all the audio. Then lastly, in OBS, as you can see, I only have two channels here that I'm recording. First off is also the audio input. So you can see it's kind of bouncing here. This is my voice. Then the audio output is essentially anything that I'm playing on my computer. So the audio output channel, if I double click here, you notice the Soundflower 2CH. So like I said, I'm basically sending one signal to, to Soundflower and OBS is almost intercepting that. Then I'm splitting it, sending the second signal to basically my Blue Yeti, so I can also hear the audio in real time. So for example, Alexa, I wanna show you one of my uh, new tracks. And then also this is my uh, new album, Master of the Bass, at least at the time of this video. So like if I play the song, you notice now, you can hear it. I can hear it because it's being sent to 2CH right here. And then uh, Line In is splitting that, as you can see, also sending it here. So it's sending it to two different places at once. Now when I get into OBS to show you the specific settings that I use, because this is super important. Also, I just do everything recording. 
and I'm gonna go here. So typically what I do, just to show you, I record in two different audio tracks. This is very, very good for post mixing. I don't actually mix my microphone audio and the music audio beforehand. The reason why sometimes, let's say I'm reviewing a plugin and it's a violin, it could be very, very soft. Like say other times I'm reviewing a synthesizer, it could be super loud. So what I actually do is actually do post mixing, which I'll get to again a little bit later in this video. So I record two different audio tracks. Obviously I have the input, which is just my microphone audio, my voice, then the output, which is basically the music itself. And then I use the Apple VT H.264 hardcore encoder, or some of the hardware encoder. This one I find is the least CPU intensive, and especially like I said, when I'm running a ton of stuff, which makes it a lot easier. Then these are basically the more fine-tuned settings. I basically have like a bitrate of only 5,000, and I'm not gonna try to go too, too in-depth about video production on this video. I want to be very basic or beginner style, but basically this frame rate and bit rate. Frame rate is essentially how many pictures you're seeing every second. So for example, if I record in 30 FPS, you're actually seeing 30 pictures every second or 30 frames every second. Now, bit rate is the quality of those pictures. So, you know, do I want it to be super, super high quality or super, super low quality? So it's kind of a balancing act. Every computer is different, right? And also depends on how many things you're running, how many programs you're running. But I find it's a balancing act of having the highest amount of FPS you can, or basically the most frames per second, while also having the highest bit rate. Because if each picture is perfect quality, it's gonna be great, but you may have to lower your FPS because it's so CPU intensive, or vice versa. So then as you can see here, these are my other settings. So video, I do, again, everything in 30 FPS. This is kind of the quality I record in. I actually record my phone in 4K, like I said. And then my computer, I actually record in technically 1280 by 800, but then I shrink that down to 720. And then in advance, in case you're curious, this is super, super advanced stuff. Also, there's a color format and the color space and the color range that I use. You don't really have to touch that too much, but those are basically my main settings I use in OBS. So now I'm gonna get into the editing process. So obviously I showed you my equipment, right? My tripod, my microphone, my computer and everything. The second thing I showed you is basically the routing. Because when it comes to the routing, this is very important for editing, you have to focus on four things. The first thing is basically the video of me, right? Like me being in the corner. The second is also the video of the computer, of the screen and, and what you're seeing. The third is the audio of me, or the audio of me talking. The fourth is obviously the audio of the music itself, or basically whatever I'm trying to play. So I recorded this basically makeshift video. I'm just gonna X all these out. This basically random video I just filmed, just kind of use it as an example. So what I have now is two different files. I have the file of my for my phone, right, or for my camera. And then I have the actual file from OBS of you basically being able to see my computer screen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually, it's kind of random, but I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna go to export as 720. So essentially what I'm doing now as I'm kind of rebouncing out the video at the same quality. The reason why I do this is because for whatever reason, when you're using the Apple encoder on OBS, the vial itself can get kind of glitchy. I don't know why, it's like a weird glitch. So basically I bounce it out again. So now I basically have the main video of my computer and everything. Next thing to do is I'm gonna bring up Audacity. And like I said before, I record two separate audio tracks. So what I actually do is I bring this in here and it says, okay, which audio stream do you want? I'm gonna select both like so, it's gonna import it in. So as you can see now, I have two different audio tracks. I have the audio track now of my voice and me talking, and then the audio track of actual, the music. So I'm gonna basically X one out. I'm gonna export this one as one. So essentially what I'm doing is saying, hey, I'm just gonna export this as one file, based on my voice. Then I'm gonna kind of undo that. So now I'm gonna basically bounce off the second one. So now essentially what I'm doing is I'm basically splitting up the audio into two separate tracks so I can mix it properly. So I'm just gonna do two. Okay, so as you can see now, we have the two separate audio files, one being my voice and me talking, the second one being the music. Now for me, when it comes to the editing process, I first start with the audio. That way the audio is already done, then I jump to the video. So I'm gonna go to Ableton, and what I'm gonna do is basically import these in. So I'm gonna go like this, one and then two. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my master, I'm gonna throw on a limiter, I use the Pro L2, and I'm gonna pick the gentle and musical setting, in case you're curious. But even the regular setting should be fine, I just do that just to make it a little bit easier. Now, one thing I will say with, when it comes to these files, make sure they're not warped, because if they're warped, there's definitely gonna be something off when it comes to my talking, basically my voice and the audio of the music itself. So I'm gonna kind of click and drag with this. I'll try to make sure that none of these are warped or the beginning or the end of the file is kind of cut off. So now obviously I have it here. Next thing I'm gonna do is make sure, uh, I'm just gonna put this on to CH. Okay, that way I can at least hear it and you can hear it too. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solo this and I actually already created my own kind of YouTube vocal rack, as you can see here. So I'm gonna click this. All I basically do is I basically low cut and high cut with the, Q, uh, the Q2. 
And then I use my Pro Tool. Now you notice I'm the, the game's plus 25. The reason why is I record both my audio of me talking and the music at super soft levels. This is such a big music production pro tip. Always record way softer than you think because if it clips, there's no way you can really fix it. I always record super, super soft. So now I'm gonna go here, so. And here's my track, Whiny Batty Pond Me. So that's me talking. So I'm gonna throw another limiter on actually. I'm gonna do this. And here's my track, Whiny Batty Pond Me. So what I like to do is sometimes get kind of close to the point where it's limiting it, but not completely. And here's my track, Whiny Batty Pond Me. So that seems fine, right? So now I'm like, okay, the, the audio is basically set for my voice. I'm gonna kind of copy and paste this now on the music one. Now typically music, I don't need, it doesn't need to be as loud, so I don't need to kind of push it too much, but let's see. Whiny Batty. So. Whiny Batty Pond Me. So I might make that a little bit louder, actually, surprisingly. Let's do this. Track whiny batty pond me. Track whiny about. So now after a little bit, I basically just mix them to make sure the volume of both my voice and the music's the same. Obviously, as you can imagine, if my voice is super, super quiet and then the music's super loud, it'll make you jump. Or vice versa, if my voice is super loud and the music's quiet, you'll be like, wait, I can't even hear how this plugin sounds or how this music sounds. So make sure that they're the same volume, then they basically just bounce it out. So now basically I have everything I need now to now edit my video because as you can see, I have, like I said, the video of me, the video of the tutorial itself or of my computer, and now the audio, which is already pre-mixed, I'm all set to go. So I'm gonna pull up iMovie. I actually use iMovie for all of my editing and everything. I will say I have a link list below if you wanna get more technical with iMovie. I've actually done a lot of tutorials on one of my other YouTube channels for like iMovie tutorials, tips, tricks, techniques, so on and so forth. iMovie is an unbelievable program. I know a lot of people sometimes like, oh, I'm not gonna use iMovie, I have to get Adobe Premiere or I have to get uh, Final Cut. I'm telling you, iMovie is unbelievable with what it can do. So now as you can see, basically, I have basically my blank project. So I'm now gonna take the first thing is gonna be the video itself. So now as you can see, this is the video of the music production tutorial. I'm also gonna do this, because as you can see, these are super quiet. I'm gonna basically boost the audio of this video. This is gonna help for syncing a little bit later. Now you can see, I basically I have my Ableton tutorial. So I'm gonna make this loud, boom. So you can see basically me talking and whatnot. Next, I'm gonna bring the video of me. So basically I'm gonna put it on top. I'm gonna be doing something called a picture in picture. Just like you're seeing now in this video, a picture in picture is when you have basically two videos or two pictures playing at the exact same time. So I'm gonna go to picture in picture here, and then I'm gonna put this in the corner. This is a weird thing with me. Obviously everybody's different. I feel like if I'm looking this way, I have to be looking towards the tutorial itself. I hate it when I'd be here, because even though, yeah, I guess it's just in the other corner, because in my mind, I'm looking this way, I wanna be looking. So if I was looking this way, for example, I probably have this here. Just a weird thing with me. I feel like it's just, I, it's just a pet peeve. So I'm gonna put this here, right in the corner. And then I'm gonna remove this kind of thing here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly basically sync up these audios. Cause you may be wondering like, okay, you have all the audio and all the video done, but how do you sync it up? So what I actually do is I basically sync up first the audio of my phone. So as you can imagine, not only did I record the audio from my microphone, but I'm also recording the audio from my phone inevitably. So that's how I basically sync them up to make sure nothing's out of sync. So now I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. So I see this kind of just, I do manually and both auditorily. So I just kind of go here. I'm gonna go, here's an example. All right, so they kind of sound, typically when they're synced up, they almost sound like a bit of a phaser on like kind of. So now I basically have this. All right, so I'll just kind of stop there. So now let's say this is my video again, pretend this is something I just filmed that's kind of like an example. So basically I have this synced up now, right? So now I have, here's an example of a music production tutorial. And here's my track, Whiny Batty Pond Me. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then crop this. Sometimes this is fine, but what I like to do kind of is do something like this. And then I'll probably shrink this down maybe to here, right? That way it's a little bit, now I might even do this too. I might I'm gonna just do something like that. Maybe bring it just a little bit so my head's not completely cut off. And then I might even move this back a little bit. So I might push this back a slide bit. That, uh, I mean, that should be fine. Um, I might even cut this from the bottom here actually. So it's a little more zoomed in. Yeah, that should work. So now that I basically have everything cropped the right way, as you can see, you can see Ableton clearly. 
uh, you know, my, I'm in the corner. I kind of cropped it a little bit. Now it's time for the audio. So as you can see here, I already synced these up. This makes sure that everything's in sync with what I'm doing and also what I'm hearing. So now I'm gonna bring in the actual audio track itself because obviously I already kind of pre-mixed this in Ableton and it sounds the exact way that I want it to. So now I'm just gonna go here um, and I'm just gonna be sure to find the point that the audio's playing at. So it's gonna be like that, looks like. Now it's time for syncing. And again, I do this a bit of just kind of visually and then like I said, uh, auditorily. So now when I play it, here's an example of a music. So again, sounds a bit like a phaser, or even like a chorus, because obviously they're all playing at the same time. Now I'm gonna do is delete this. So now all I'm gonna do is basically duck these two out because I want the video, but I don't want the audio because I have all the audio here. So now when I play it, here's an example of a music production tutorial. And here's my track, Wine You Baddie Pond Me. So now that I've basically everything lined up and pretty much good to go, right? Like, as you can see, the four things I have to worry about, I have the video of me in the corner. I have the video obviously of Ableton of the tutorial I'm doing. And then the audio, I have both the audio of my microphone and obviously of the music itself. And then lastly, I use the audio from my phone to make sure everything's perfectly synced up. Now I can finally bounce the video out. So I'm gonna go to here, I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna shrink it, like I said, a couple times to 720p. The main reason why is that the main bulk or quality of this video is 720, because think about it, you're mostly seeing Ableton. I'm just a little smudge in the corner. And yes, even though this is in 4K, the bulk of the video is in 720p. If it was the opposite, like say it'd be mostly me, like the big picture would be me, and I've Ableton small in the corner, I might actually bounce it out in, in uh, 4K. But in this case, again, because all my music production tutorials are mostly you seeing my computer with me in the corner, I wanna bounce it out in 720p. I'm gonna click next. So after I click next, then I'm just gonna kinda say, I don't know, video, I'll just call it like that. And then I just have to wait for this to basically to render out. Now as you can see, basically said exporting my movie was successful. Now one thing I am gonna say is that if you are doing this, right, and obviously this is the main technique I use for all my videos, you'll be surprised how long it can sometimes take for it to bounce out. I mean, especially let's say if I have a video that's say an hour long, for example, let's say I'm doing like a very long music production tutorial, it might take a few hours because it has to basically render all this together. So I'm just gonna close. So I'm just gonna close iMovie now because I don't need it. And then here's basically the final video. So what I'll do is I'll basically go to here. Now you can see everything, so I'm just gonna play it. Here's an example of a music production tutorial. And here's my track, Wine You Baddie Pond Me. Right. 